ओके सो द सेकेंड चैप्टर वी कैन बिगिन विद इट इज थ्योरी बेस्ड एंड इट इज हार्डली ऑफ थ्री और फाइव मार्क्स क्वेश्चन विल कम फ्रॉम हेयर नो लाइक केस स्टडीज ऑल्सो कैन कम बट इट इज नॉट वेरी आई मीन द केस स्टडीज इट्स वेरी लेस चांसेस टू गेट केस स्टडीज फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर ओके सो लेट एस स्टार्ट वॉट इज अ कंपनी द वर्ल्ड कंपनी इज राइट फ्रॉम द लेट एंड वर्ल्ड कॉम इज विद और टूगेदर पेनिस इज ए ब्रेड सो इट इज कॉल्ड बॉडी कॉपरेट इट इज कॉल्ड बाय इट इज कॉल्ड अ बॉडी कॉपरेट बिकॉज द पर्सन कंपोजिंग इट दे आर मेड इन टू वन बॉडी बाई इनकॉपरेटिंग इट अकॉर्डिंग टू द लॉ एंड क्लोदिंग इट इन टू अ लीगल पर्सनैलिटी द वर्ड कॉपरेशन इज डेराइव फ्रॉम द लेट इन वर्ड कॉर्पस विच मीन्स बॉडी अकॉर्डिंगली कॉपरेशन इज अ लीगल पर्सन क्रिएटेड बाय द प्रोसेस अगे अदर दैन द नैचुरल वर्ड एज अ लीगल पर्सन अ कॉपरेट इज अ केपेबल ऑफ इंजॉइंग मैनी राइट्स एंड इंक्रीम मैनी लाइबिलिटीज एज ए नैचुरल पर्सन सो इन कॉपरेटेड कंपनी ओज इट एक्सिस्टिंग आई द बाई स्पेशल एक्ट ऑफ पार्लियामेंट और बाई कंपनी लॉ पब्लिक कॉपरेशन लाइक लाइफ इंश्योरेंस कॉपरेशन ऑफ इंडिया एस बी आई हैव कम ब्रॉड इन टू एक्सिस्टेंस थ्रू स्पेशल एक्ट्स ऑफ पार्लियामेंट वेर एज कंपनीज लाइक टाटा स्टी लिमिटेड रिलायंस इंडस्ट्रीज लिमिटेड हैव बीन फॉर्म अंडर द कंपनी लॉ सो दे हैव गिवन द एग्जाम्पल ऑल्सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल पब्लिक कोऑपरेशन दे हैव कम इन टू एक्सिस्टिंग टू स्पेशल एक्ट ऑफ पार्लियामेंट वाइज कंपनी लाइक टाटा रिलायंस हैव कम इन टू इम्पोज बाय कंपनी लॉ Now, what is the definition of company? Under the Companies Act 2013, a company means the company in cooperation with this act or any previous company law. Previous company law, मतलब like 1956 or previous acts that we have studied in the previous chapter. In a company law, a company is a legal person or a legal entity separate and capable of surviving beyond the lives of the members. So, it is always a separate entity. A company is rather a legal advice. to uh, for attainment of social and economic and it is therefore a combined political social economic and, and what legal institution thus the term company has been derived in many ways it is means of cooperation and organization in the conduct of the enterprise it is intricate centralized economic and administrative structure run by professional managers who hire what capital from investors so what is the meaning definition of this company company it is a company is incorporated under this act means 2013 act or any previous act and basically it is a legal device which is formed for attainment of social and economic end so it is therefore a combined political social economical legal institution the term company have been derived in many ways for example so this was the first definition that you can refer to and second definition you can refer to this it means a cooperation and organization in the conduct of the enterprise it is a centralized economic administrative structure run by professional managers who hire capital from the investor so those who take the capital from the investors then it is uh, the company means this means to, which are formed by the uh, people who hire the, cap the capital from the investors so lord uh, justice L uh, lindley gives gave a very beautiful uh, definition company is an association of many persons who contribute money or money is worth to a common stock and employed in some trade or business and to share profit and loss arising therefore so what has justice uh, lindley what has justice lindley told that justice lindley have said like according to company it means an association it is an association association of persons means many people are here to form a company okay who contribute money now what these people will do they will contribute money okay they will contribute money just second contribute money and employ it on some trade or business now they have contributed money they will employ 
first second step third now they will employ money where this money will contributed money will be employed in business okay so and to share the profit and loss now they will share profit and loss please make this chart definition of company so what is definition of company according to justice lindley means what is company company is an association of persons who contribute money and employ this money which has been contributed in a business and also with this business whatever revenue is generated they share profit amongst them right so the common stock so contributed is denoted in money and is the capital of the company the persons who contributed it belongs are members now the persons are members and money is capital understood two different words you have come across the proportion of the capital stock to which each member has contributed is share now what you have uh, contributed na this is called as share capital members okay the shares are also transferable all the right to transfer them may be restricted now in the previous lecture we have read a definition of private company where was there? it was written that in private company there may be restriction in transfer of shares this they are referring to restriction can be there in case of the transfer of shares but yeah this contribution is called as what <clears throat> shares this is you will please mark down this so the definitions clearly bring out the company company coming to existence only when it is registered under the act when it is registered it has legal personality of its own separate and distinctive from its members an unregistered company has no separate legal existence company is created by law and law alone can dissolve it so case law has come into across pratap reddy thoro versus tsr research private limited the supreme court held that notice inviting tender is not important just leave it legal status of registered company who is the company which are registered what is the legal status of them so company on incorporation become an artificial jurisdictional person means it is separate from its members since a body corporate it is person is a creation of law it is not a human body it is an artificial jurisdictional person created by law and it is clothed by many rights obligations powers and duties prescribed by law it can however do anything what a natural person can do except certain acts which require personal execution so it can do any acts which as law has prescribed into thus a company cannot marry or divorce it can or not vote in an election on incorporation the company requires a separate legal entity you can write down here also status distinctive form and independent of its members unlike partnership partnership in that partnership form which has no separate existence from its partner a company it has a separate corporate it is different from the members who constitute it most striking characteristics are discussed corporate personality perpetual succession means company once formed it ha it is perpetual it can end it can wound up only by voluntary wound up either by voluntarily or by law 
separate property company properties is different from the property of the members transferability of shares the shares so contributed it is easily transferable and capacity to sue and be sued so you can uh, a company can sue in its own name or can sue another company or a person corporate personality so this was the first point legal status of registered companies so second comes corporate personality first point now they are highlighting two characteristics of uh, company first is corporate personality write down First is corporate personality. A company incorporated under the act is listed with corporate personality means it bears its own name and acts thereunder. Its assets are separate and distinct from those of the members. It is different person from the members who compose it. It can incur debt, borrow money, have a bank account, employ people, enter into contracts, sue and be sued. It is capable of owing the property. So this is the corporate personality means it bears its own name. Its assets, these are separate and distinctive from its members. It is a different person. It can incur debt, incur borrow money, have its own bank account it can employ people it can enter into contract it can be sued or be sued either can, uh, other outsider can sue a company or it can sue other um, outsider it is capable of owing property its shareholder are the notional owners and do not own anything except ownership of shares issued and they are its creditors simultaneously a shareholder cannot be held liable for the acts of the company even if it holds virtually the entire share capital. They are not liable for what? The acts of the company. Indian courts have recognized the principle of separate legal entity of the company T.R. Pratt versus B.E.D. Sasson Company Limited. It was observed that under the law, a incorporated company is distinct entity and although all the shares may be practically controlled by person in law, a company is a distinctive entity. Shareholders are not the agents of the company, so they cannot bind by their act. They are not the agent, they are only the owners. Who? Shareholders. Write down here. Company does not hold the property as an agent or trustee for its members and they cannot sue for enforce of its right nor they can be sued in respect of the liabilities. Thus, incorporation is the act of forming a legal corporation as a jurisdiction person. A jurisdiction person in, is in law also conflict with the rights and obligation and is dealt in accordance with the law. In other words, the entity acts as a natural person but only through a designated person whose acts are processed within an embed of law. Okay. The case of Salmon versus Salmon and Company Limited, very important markdown, very important. The above case has clearly established the principle that once a company has validly constituted the company, that becomes a legal person distinct from these members. And for its, and for its purpose, it is immaterial whether any member holds large or small proportion of the share and whether he holds those shares beneficially or mere trustee. In this case, what happened, Salmon had for some years carried a prosperous business as a leather merchant and a boot manufacturer. This person, he was a manufacturer of what? Boot and leather. He formed a limited company consisting of himself, his wife, daughter, four sons, all shareholders. All of them subscribed one share each so that the actual cash paid as the capital was what? <clears throat> Pound 7. Salmon sold this, his business which was perfectly 
solvent at that time and to the company formed by him for the sum of pound 38,782. The company's nominal capital was pound 40,000 in, in what pound one shares in part payment of the purchase money for the business sold to the company debentures of the amount pound 10,000 secured by a floating charge on the company assets were issued to Salmon who also applied for and received an allotment of 20,000 pound one fully paid up shares. The remaining amount was paid to Salmon in cash. Salmon was MD and two of his sons were other two directors. The company soon ran into difficulties and the debenture holders appointed a receiver and a company went into liquidation. The total assets of the company amounted to pound 650, its liabilities were so and so. And this. Now wh what was the decision? Directly come, the company is a different, de different so how you were right, if suppose Salmon versus Salmon, you have no need to go into such a deep fact, simple, what was the decision taken? In Salmon versus Salmon Company Limited, limited, it, is, uh, the, it was held by Lordship of ha House of Lords observed that the company is a different person altogether from the subscriber of MOA and though it may be after incorporation his business is precisely the same as before, the same person are managing same hands receive profits, the company is not in law their agent or trustee. Statute enacts nothing as to act or degree of interest which may be held by even seven or proportion of interest and plains professed by one or majority of the shareholders. There is nothing in the act requiring that subscriber to the MOA should be independent or interconnected or that they or they or any of them should act as a substantial interest in the undertaking or that they should have a mind or will of their own or that uh, there should be anything like a balance of power in the constitution of so means simply decision was that company is an incorporated it is a separate legal entity from the what from the persons who are the shareholders who have um, uh, who have subscribed to the MOA then leave this case law is not important this also you can leave company is an artificial person so first point was corporate personality then is company is an artificial person second point what is an artificial person artificial person means judicial person it has a legal name certain rights protection privileges responsibility and liability in law similar to that of the natural person Company is an artificial person created by law. It is not a human being, but it acts through human being. He acts through human being. It is not a human being. It is considered as a legal person who can enter into contract, possesses properties in its own name, sue and can be sued by order. It is called an artificial person. It is, it is invisible, intangible, existing only contemplation of law. It is capable of enjoying rights and its duties. What is the case law? Case law, you can just uh, go through it, but it's not important. Now, third point is perpetual succession. So, artificial person, how it is an artificial person? There are some of the characteristics in the artificial person. What is the characteristic? It is invisible. It is intangible, existing only in the, in the eyes of law, in the contemplation of law. It is capable of uh, enjoying rights and subject to duties. Third point is, Perpetual succession. Perpetual succession means that the membership of the company may change from time to time, but it does not affect its continuity. Means it is continued. An incorporated person never dies except when it is wound up as per the law. Company being separate legal person is unaffected by death, insolvency, retirement, departure of any member or director. Means any member can go, any member can uh, die, but it is unaffected it remains separate legal entity despite total change in the membership according to section 9 of the companies act 2013 from the date of incorporation mentioned in the certificate of incorporation the certificate of incorporation it is given at the time when the company is incorporated okay such so subscriber to MOA and all such persons become the members of the company shall be a body Cooperate by the name contained in MOA, capable of exercising all the functions of the incorporated company under the act and having a perpetual succession to acquire, to hold, to dispose of the property, both movable and immovable, tangible and intangible, to contract, to sue and be sued by its name. Same, what was we have read? The uh, members 
may come and go but company can go forever during the war all the members of one private company while in general meeting were killed in bomb but the company survived even not even hydrogen bomb can have destroyed in Gup, uh, gupalpur tea company versus peshok tea company limited the whole company was taken over by act which purportedly seized the right to take action against the company the court held that neither the company was singular nor any was have right to take action against it therefore until and unless the company is liquidated legally a company will have perpetual succession and existing is not affected by its financial state and the lives of shareholder so the third point first second was artificial third is perpetual succession okay hmm. So variation in members or their identity does not affect the legal existence and identity of the company. Company is a creation of law and can not, can be dissolved only under the law means binding up. Even if all the members of the company leave or die, then the company will not come into an end, will continue existence. Illustration they have given an example. MS ABC Private Limited has three directors. All three directors was also the shareholders of the company. All the directors die in a car accident while going for a meeting. In this case, principle of perpetual succession applies, and even if all the directors die, then the company will continue to have existence, and the successor of the company can take over the affairs of the company. Means successors means another directors, another person who are appointed as director, they can take care of the company. Next is separate property. A company being a legal person and entirely distinct from its member is capable of enjoying, enjoying disposing of the property in its own name. Right? Illustration. See, Mr. Amit incorporated a company name is of a, a ABC Com Public Limited. The company provided catering services. Mr. Am Amit decides to purchase a new building and a company van. As an ABC Public Limited, a company can legally purchase property under the business information. Mr. Amit does not have to purchase a property in his personal information because company is itself having a capability of holding the property in his own name. Mr. Amit can begin the property purchase, purchase process using his business name and banking information. On completion of the paperwork, the deed to the property is under the business name. Next case law, uh, you can mark, uh, this is also not important. Uh, I will tell you which all case laws are important. Fifth, transferability. Of shares. Make this start. Okay. The capital of the company is divided into parts called shares. The shares are said to be immovable, they are said to be movable property. The shares are subject to certain conditions levied by law on free transferability. No shareholder is permanently or necessarily beaded to a company. Shares are movable properties. Section 44 of the Companies Act enunciates the principle by providing shares held by the members. They are movable property. You can transfer the shares. Can be transferred from one person to another in the manner provided by the AOA. Whatever I have I've told in the previous class, what is articles of association? It is an internal rules and regulations. If it is written in the AOA of the company that yeah, the shares are movable, then you can transfer. Means they can be transferred. If the articles do not provide anything for the transfer of shares and the regulations contained in table F, schedule 1. So what is it? If implied, if it is not written in AOA, what then what? Then you will refer this. Table 
एफ शेड्यूल वन आर ऑल्सो एक्सप्रेसली एक्सक्लूडेड द ट्रांसफर ऑफ शेयर विल बी गवर्न बाय जनरल लॉ रिलेटिंग टू ट्रांसफर ऑफ मूवेबल प्रॉपर्टी अ मेंबर मे सेल हिज शेयर इन द ओपन मार्केट एंड रियलाइज द मनी इन्वेस्टेड बाय हिम दिस प्रोवाइड्स लिक्विडिटी टू अ मेंबर एज ही कैन फ्रीली सेल हिज शेयर एंड शोर स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द कंपनी एज द मेंबर इज नॉट विड्रॉइंग मनी फ्रॉम द कंपनी Stock exchange is provide adequate facility for sale and purchase of the shares of listed entities. In the listed company, the shares are transferable through electronic modes, that is DP in digitalized form instead of physical shares. Please write, please mark this bullets. Uh, I mean uh, this uh, whatever have been rounded by me. so <clears throat> shares are movable properties so in table f schedule 1 it is said that they are movable properties right if suppose if it is not mentioned in your aoa you will refer to this table what table f schedule 1 okay so transferability of shares of the private limited company so in the previous uh, lecture we have uh, we have studied at private limited company in the definition we have studied that they, there is a restriction to transfer shares now what will happen in case of private company cannot they, they private company people the members they cannot transfer the share what is this why right so Uh, however the restrictions with respect to transferability of shares of private even if shares of private limited company is in demat form restriction by aoa shall apply the concept of free transferability of shares in a public and a private company as discussed in western maharashtra development cooperation limited versus bajaj auto limited in this case the court held that company act makes a clear distinction between transferability of shares relating to the private and the public company so there is complete distinction between a private and a public company by this definition a private company is a company which restrict the right to transfer its shares in case of public the act provides shares or debentures and any interest of the company they are what freely transferable so in case of private company there is a restriction to transfer the shares simple question is there in case of shareholders agreement must the shareholders with specific restriction like right to refusal or preemptive right given to any shareholders whether such restriction are impossible or not if the same are not a part of the aoa as per the supreme court judgment uh, rangaraj versus gopala krishna and other it was held that the clause of the shareholders agreement can be enforceable provided the same are the main part of the aoa now see the shareholders agreement is different aoa is different if it is a part of aoa then refer shareholders agreement if it is not part of aoa then don't refer all right capacity to sue or to be sued so here you write about the private 
public definition case law you can refer write down in your book uh, western maharashtra development cooperation versus bajaj auto western write down full name okay maharashtra versus bajaj auto in time write this also okay a company being a body corporate can sue or be sued in its own name to sue means to institute a legal proceeding against a person or to bring a what suit in the court of law all legal proceeding is the company are to be instituted by its name similarly the company may bring an action against anyone in its own name i told you previously as well company right to sue arises when some loss is caused to the company that is property or the personality of the company hence the company is entitled to sue for the damages and libel or slander as the case may be a company as a dis uh, person distinct from its members may even sue uh, uh, one of its own members company has a right to seek damages when a def uh, defamatory material published about it affects its business suppose a defamatory ma material any wrong information material is published about it then also it can sue where video cassettes were prepared by the workmen of a company showing the struggle against the company's management it was held it is not actionable unless shown that the contents of the cassette would be defamatory so the content should be defamatory means it if it is affecting the reputation the court did not restrain the exhibition of the cassette so in this particular case one cassette it was floated against the company by its worker the court held that this is not defamatory so it needs to it can be exhibited so this case law you can write down uh, employees federation versus tvs and uh, tvs and sons employees federation versus tvs and sons then rajendranath uh, not important come to the illustration suppose there was a company antarish limited antarish limited can file a defamation case against a defamatory article that was published against it it can also file public pol uh, police complaints for various com offenses it can basically undertake all sorts of litigation through an authorized representative it is pertinent to note that an authorized representative of company can be changed during the course of litigation and doing so would not hamper the pending case before courts and it's all understood i hope company is not a citizen now altogether a different uh, thing so seven points we have covered quickly what are the characters of the company first corporate personality second artificial person it is an artificial person which is this distinct it has a distinct personality different from its members constituting it third is the perpetual succession even though members come go but company goes on 
separate property it has a separate property it can the property can be registered in the company's name transferability of shares private and public both the definitions were covered in the case law which is written western maharashtra versus bajaj auto six point capacity to sue and be sued it it uh, the case law was there employees federation versus pvs and sons right next the company is not a citizen just a second okay basically the points important points they were referred to okay the company although a legal person is not a citizen under citizenship act or constitution of india it is not a citizen the reason as to why company cannot be treated as a citizen is that citizenship is available to the individuals and the natural persons only and not a jurisdiction person state trading corporation of india limited it was a good case law please mark down supreme court held that a decision uh see this is how you will write the case law okay don't write the facts simple decision supreme court held that the state trading corporation although a legal person was not a citizen and act only through a natural person nevertheless it is noted that certain fundamental rights enriched in the constitution for protection of the person that is right to equality are also available to a company to subsection f of citizenship act expressly excludes a company aoa or body from citizen but all the rights right to equality is available to a company but though it is not a citizen rc copper versus union of india important case law please mark down we we'll read what we, what is happened in this case in this case supreme court held that where the legislative measures directly touch the company of which the petitioner is a shareholder he can petition on behalf of the company if by the impunged action his right are also infringed suppose his rights are also infringed then the shareholder can sue the company in that case the court entertained the petition under article 32 of the constitution article 32 of the constitution and instance the of a director as a shareholder and granted leave it is therefore not individual right is not lost by reason of the fact that he is a shareholder of the company so article 32 may he got a protection that yeah right to uh, right of an individual to get a protection under article 32 though a company is a shareholder this case law what defines yeah next is uh, just leave it company has nationality and residence though it is established through judicial decisions that a company cannot be citizen company now it cannot be citizen yet it had to have nationality domicile at as a residence right mm -hmm. it was uh, simple tulika versus parent company joint stock company resides where its place of business cooperation is the where the meetings of the whole company or where or who represented are held and where it is a governing body meets in bodily presence of the persons of the company and exercises its powers conferred upon it by statute and by the articles of the what association yeah next is limited liability the privilege of limited liability for business debts is one of the principal advantages of doing business under corporate form of the organization it has a limited liability it is not personal liability it has a limited liability company being a separate person is the owner of its assets and bound by the liabilities the liability of a member as a shareholder extends to the contribution of the capital up to the nominal value of the shares held and not paid by him so is the liability of the member unlimited no they are only be responsible for the shares which are not paid the nominal value of the shares which has not been paid for that value only they are liable they don't have the unlimited liability 
members even as a whole are neither the owners of the company undertaking nor liable for its debts in other words the shareholder is liable to pay the balance on the shares not an unlimited liability if any due on the shares held by him when called upon to pay and nothing more even if the liabilities of the company far exceeds its assets this means that the liability of the member is limited please mark down the star and important for example if a holds a share of total value of 1000 and are paid 500 right 50% part payment is made at the time of allotment he cannot be called to pay more than 500 the amount remaining unpaid on the shares now for the amount remaining 500 will he will only pay right if he holds fully paid up share he has no further liability to pay even if the company is declared insolvent in the case of the company limited by guarantee the liability of member is limited to specific amount of guarantee which is mentioned in moa yesterday also when we were discussing about the definitions company limited by shares and company limited by guarantee means in that guarantee company limited by guarantee also shareholder are only responsible for that guaranteed amount which was specified in moa at the time of subscribing to the what shares yeah next comes exceptions to the principle of limited liability now you have read yeah members have limited liability what are the exceptions see the members are severally liable in certain cases the following are the prerequisites for attracting the provisions of 3a the number of members of the company is reduced as below 7 in case of public or below in case of private see if suppose the number of members Uh, numbers which are needed for public seven and two in case of the private limited reduced uh, then they can be severally liable the company carrying on the business for more than six months with such number of members ab uh, what was the statutory limit two in case of seven in case of public and two in case of private company suppose with these less number less than these numbers the company has carried on the business for more than six months. and the members are cognizant of the fact that the company is carrying of the business with such number less number of members see now they are per, they should be personally liable why because if uh, being a member you are not aware that your company has been running business for more than 6 months that to with the less number of members as per the statutory limit then you should be personally liable in such case the remaining members so continuing in the company shall be liable for the payment of whole debts of the company contracted during that time and when the company is an unlimited company and the sub uh, section 3 sub section 2 clause c of the act then also it is an exception to liability the company has been brought uh, brought by furnishing any false incorrect information representation or suppressing any material fact or information in any of the document declaration filed or made for incorporating such company or by fraudulent action the tribunal may on the application made to it on being satisfied the situation so warrant like the liability of the members to be unlimited now third point is if a company has been incorporated by furnishing a wrong information suppressing any material fact then the court can tribunal tribunal here means nclt or ncalat right national company law tribunal they can held the members liability as unlimited Further, under Section three thirty nine, where in the course of the winding up, it appears that any business of the company has been carried on with intent to defraud the creditors of the company or any other persons or fraudulent purpose, the tribunal may declare the persons who were knowingly parties to the company on the business as personally liable. Under Section thirty five, it is proved. Now it is leading to winding up. Okay. Where it is proved that prospectors have made with an intent to defraud the applicant for the securities for fraudulent purpose, every person who was director at the time of issue of prospectors, then every person who was authorized the issue of prospectors, promoter or expert of prospectors shall be personally liable. Then, when the company fails to repay the deposit or the part of the interest there on. Uh, section in section seventy four within the specified time or further time as may be allowed by tribunal it will be proved that the deposit had been accepted with the intent to defraud the depositor or the fraudulent purpose then every officer will be liable. Hmm? 
then where uh, the report made by the inspector said that the fraud has taken place in the company and due to such fraud any director kmp or officer of the company or any person or entity has taken undue advantage or benefit whether in the form of asset property cash and other manner central government may file an application before the tribunal for appropriate what orders with regard to disgorgement of such assets property cash and also for holding any director personally liable without limiting the liability so uh, we can write the main main points first is mem uh, this number of members members are severally liable second unlimited company third point incorporate this is a heading this is how you will remember the points by false information wound up process it, it during the winding up process it come into uh, information like uh, that the company has been carried out with the effect uh, to defraud their creditors then prospectus you know when the company is formed uh, suppose the public company is formed by issue of prospectus issue of prospectus to the public right so that issue at the time of issue the intention of the company was wrong right and it has uh, basically in this point where the company fails to repay the deposit then also unlimited liability then report by inspector like fraud has been conducted in the company then cg can write to tribunal sorry Please write down these points. okay next is contractual rights what are contractual rights they refer to guarantee set of rights given to all the parties two or more when they have entered into valid contract contract rights usually involves business matters some matters of contractual rights are right to purchase a product or service right to sell a product or service so these are the contractual rights a company being a legal entity different from its member can enter into contract for the conduct of the business in its own name a shareholder cannot enforce a contract made by his company he is neither a party to the contract nor entitled to the benefit derived of it. a company is not a trustee for its member likewise a shareholder cannot be sued on the contract made by his company distinction between a company and its members is not confined to the rules of privity but permits the whole law of contract thus if a director fails to disclose a breach of his duties towards his company and in consequence a shareholder is induced to enter into contract with the director on behalf of the company which he would not have entered into had there been the disclosure the shareholder cannot resign the contract see what is saying again if a director fails to disclose a breach of his duties about uh, towards his company 
सपोज ये ब्रीच ड्यूटेंट इज प्रिपेयर टू डिस्क्लोज दिस एंड इन कॉन्सिक्वेंस शेयर होल्डर इज इंड्यूस टू एंटर इन टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद डायरेक्टर ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द कंपनी विच ही वुड नॉट हैव एंटर्ड इन टू हैड देयर बीन डिस्कलोजर द शेयर होल्डर कैन नॉट रिसाइन दी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ही कैन नॉट डिनाई दिस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इन दिस केस सिमिलरली मेंबर ऑफ द कंपनी कैन नॉट स्यू विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टॉर्ट्स committed against the company nor can be sued of the torts committed by the company therefore a company as a legal person can take action to enforce its legal rights or be sued for breach of its legal duties its rights duties are distinct from those of its constituent members disadvantages of registered company see now when you register a company what are the disadvantages first comes write down first comes formality and expense you also know there are formalities in uh, constituting a company so expensive also in form of uh, like you have to file so many forms in the ministry of corporate affairs to get the company registered so formality and expense the registration of the company involves a lot of statutory formalities and the consequent expense The affairs and working of the company have been conducted strictly in accordance with the applicable legal provision. Non-compliance of which entails penal consequence. If you don't comply with provision, penal consequence. Other form of business organization comparatively relieved from the legal compulsion and formalities. First point. Second is privacy loss. Another form of disadvantage of a company of loss of privacy. Various returns, resolutions, documents are to be uploaded and filed with the ROC to make it public. to make write down to make it public the office of registrar of the company is a public office accessible to the public on payment of the prescribed fees for inspection of any document filed by the company third is diversified control members of the company cannot have cannot have as effective control over the workings of the company as in the sole proprietorship and partnership so it is divided right the duties are divided normally the shareholders of the company are very high in numbers and it acts through the representative of the shareholders in the name of the directors public accountability company cannot work in contravention of public interest you also know because as an in public interest will come into conflict conflict means come into uh, uh, contradicting contradicting position with corporate working intervention by regulatory authorities be triggered fifth uh, fourth fifth is fraud possibilities company operate through a control of economic resources in a few hands there is a possibility that other people who have control contributed funds to the company either as a shareholder or debenture creditor lender those few hands may be defrauded by diverting funds of the company to a private channel by this time it comes to notice of regulating authorities the damage is already done so there may be fraud situations also the people who are having control they can you know you invest that money into some other personal reason so that situation also it is very disadvantage yeah so formality and expense privacy laws diversified control public accountability fraud possibilities five points next is type of registered company first slide down this points in your notes formalities and expense privacy laws diversified control public accountability fifth is fraud possibilities
So in time, write these points. And if someone has missed writing these points, you can just write this. So we will move forward. Types of registered companies. A company is nothing but a group of persons who have come together or contributed money for some purpose and have incorporated themselves as a separate legal per, uh, person in the form of the company for that person. Right. <clears throat> so, under Halsburg Law of England, the term company has been defined as collectivity of many individuals united in one body under special denomination having perpetual succession under an artificial form invested by the policies of law with the capacity of acting in several respects as an individual, particularly for taking and granting of the property, for contracting obligation and for suing and being sued, for enjoying privileges, immunities in a common and exercising a variety of political rights, more and more extensive according to design of the institution and the powers upon it, either at the time of creation or at the subsequent period of existence. So, now these are the type of companies you can write down in the table. First is statutory companies. Second is non statutory. companies statutory company a company may be incorporated by means of special act of parliament by state legislature such companies are called statutory companies which has been formed by the act of the parliament or the state legislature this is called statutory companies these companies are generally formed to carry out the special public undertakings like railway water ways electrical generation defense these are statutory companies second is registered companies non statutory another name is registered only but in the legal language you can write registered company Registered companies are the companies registered under the Companies Act or other Companies Act which are called registered companies. Such companies come to existence when they register under the Companies Act and a COI has been granted by the registered, which are registered under Companies Act. Unregistered companies, any unregistered company is a company which is not registered or covered under provisions of the company that it includes private, uh, partnership society, cooperative society, railway, incorporated under the act of parliament or any other hinder law registered under the previous law, means not registered. So in India two type of the companies are which may be registered, these are first.
private public so a company's liability may be limited by shares in which case the liability of the company members is limited to the amount of the shares held by them i already told you they are only liable for the unpaid amount on that shares or it may be limited by guarantee in which case the liability is member to a determined amount to which the company members have agreed to contribute if the company is dissolved when a company is wound up that outstanding liability is that that time they are liable Section three of Companies Act, read with Companies in Cooperation Rule, states that company may be formed for lawful purpose by seven or more persons where the company is formed to be public, two or more persons where the company to be formed is private, one person where the company is one person company. So these is the limit: seven, two members, and one. You can write down in your table also two or more. members seven or more members okay a company formed under subsection 1 may be either company limited by shares by guarantee unlimited guarantee so when a company is formed for lawful pur uh, purpose by these such members it can either be limited by shares it can either be limited by guarantee or limit unlimited company unlimited company may write down some uh, like one line unlimited liability amount guarantee means members will pay this amount guaranteed to be paid only at time of wind up amount liable is for unpaid amount on shares okay and in this table private and public company wait i will give you time to write just a second wait private and public company can be company limited by shares this is how you will present in your exams i am telling you then only you can score well company limited by guarantee and i am limited first write down this and then form this in your handwritten notes also Hmm. See classification of companies now. 
classification of companies in corporation membership object member liability control nationality mm, this is not important but you can just read it give it a glance classification on the basis of in corporation this is the table basis of classification the companies are divided okay first is on the basis of the incorporation first is registered company A registered company may it comes statutory company okay registered company incorporation statutory registered company and statutory company so we we'll read one by one companies may be incorporated under the following categories registered companies the companies which are incorporated in the companies act or any other previous company or registered with roc falls under this company statutory company these are constituted by special act of parliament state legislature the provision of company do not apply to them i told you previously for example life insurance lic so incorporation two companies registered company statutory company on the basis of membership public private one person one two Three. Okay, so on the basis of on the basis of liability, on the basis of liability, classification on basis of liability. First of all, okay, this is just a normal. Okay, everything they have not defined. So on the basis of liability, see limited by shares, limited by guarantee, limited by uh, guarantee, and unlimited. company on the basis of liability and on the basis of some of the basic forms are these are the just the basic forms they have written so classification on basis of incorporation registered statutory companies registered under companies act statutory companies registered in any other act except the companies act on the basis of liability three limited unlimited and guarantee So limited by shares. Company that has liability of the members limited to the liability clause in the MOA. To the amount if any unpaid on the shares respectively held by them is told as company limited by shares. Two sub section twenty two provides that company limited by share means this is important section two sub section twenty two. Company having the liability of its member limited by the MOA if any unpaid on the shares respectively held by them. For example, you can write down shareholder who has paid seventy five on the share of face value of hundred can be called upon to pay the balance. Now twenty five is left. Twenty five company limited by shares are by far the most important, and it may be either private or public. Company limited by guarantee. Two sub section twenty one of the company that provides that. Two sub section twenty two deals with limited by shares. Twenty one by guarantee. Write down here also in your table. Limited by share to subsection twenty two to subsection twenty one. Company that has a liability of members limited to such amount as the member may respectively undertake by MOA to contribute to the assets of the company in case of being wound up is known as company limited by guarantee. Members of the guarantee company are in fact placed in the position of the guarantees of the company's debts up to the agreed amount. जो भी agreed amount, whatever is the agreed amount that needs to be paid in the case of owner, they will only pay that. The members of the company is liable to a company and to any other person. Unlimited company. In this type of company, the liability of the members of the company is unlimited. Two sub section ninety two. Write down two sub section ninety two. Of the companies act provides unlimited means a company not having a limit of the liability. Such company may or may not have share capital. They can have a share capital. They cannot have the share capital. They may be either public. They may be either private. The members are liable to the company and to any other person. Both company they can be liable to a company also to any other person also. Yeah. so classification on the basis of the incorporation and on the basis of the liability other forms of the company now first of all just make this table on the basis of types of companies on the basis of classification
the basis of incorporation and on the basis of and the basis of incorporation registered and statutory under companies act 2013 statutory are other than companies act 2013 on the basis of liability <coughs> unlimited limited by share or limited by guarantee okay draw the table types of the company so next other forms of the company section 8 company npo government company holding and subsidiary companies yesterday also we have read in the like in uh, previous lecture associate company dormant small company domestic company one by one we will read quickly what is section 8 company non profit company okay whose sole objective is to promote commerce arts sports research social welfare religion uh, charity protection of the environment and useful purpose but not having the profit motive it is called npo such company may apply its profits or income in promoting its and object so what is the object um, object may be to promote commerce science sports education research social welfare religion charity protection of the environment social uh, objective you can say government company as per section 2 sub section 45 of the companies act government company means a company in which not less than 50% of the paid up share capital is held by cg sg or the government or partly by cg or partly by more or one or more sgs and includes a company which is a subsidiary company of the government company okay next is the holding and subsidiary company two sub section 46 the holding company in relation to one or more company means company which companies are subsidiary company and expression company includes the body corporate what is sub, uh, subsidiary two sub section 87 subsidiary in relation to any company means a company in which holding company controls the composition of the bod excess or own more than half of the total voting power or has its own right in one or more subsidiaries right next is associate company so two sub section 6 of the company is a registered company in relation to another company means a company in which that other company has significant control but which is not a subsidiary company of the company having contents and includes the joint venture company dormant company 455 and includes a company which is formed and registered under the act for a future project 
and hold the asset or the intellectual property which has not been carrying on the business or operation has not made a significant accounting transaction during the last two financial year or has not filed financial statements and another during the two financial years small company yesterday also we have read that the uh, small company definition has been amended now what is there it is other than the public company paid up turnover paid up of the capital does not exceed four uh, 400 crore or such other amount as may be as may be prescribed which are not more than 10 crore this is 4 crore okay 4 cr 10 cr turnover as per p and l immediately preceding year does not exceed what 40 crore or as may be prescribed which should not be more than 100 crore okay provided whole so this is small company hold uh, it shall not it sh nothing in this clause shall apply to means holding company subsidiary company is not including section net company is not including and company incorporated what governed by the special act it is not included domestic company means it conducts its affairs in its home country it should be registered under provision of the companies act or is not applicable domestic company have a registered office in india okay so, according to Income Tax Act, there is a definition of the domestic company. Domestic company means an Indian company or any other company which in respect is become liable to tax under the Act has made the prescribed arrangement for the declaration and payment within India of its dividend. So, quickly we will revise this. What is it? Section 8 company means its motive is just for uh, social education welfare religion charity this is section 8 company section 8 company npos government company to two subsection 45 where more than not less than like more than 50 percent of the paid up share capital is held by cg sg state government or central government holding or subsidiary company two subsection 46 defines holding company holding company means a company which in which companies are subsidiaries companies subsidiary company it is two subsection 87 means what company in which the holding company controls the composition and it exercises the control one half of the voting power more than half of the voting power in the <coughs> uh, holding uh, this holding of the in this subsidiary company then comes associate company two subsection 6 in which other first entity has a significant influence some of the influence but it does not mean that it is a subsidiary company if it is a subsidiary company two things will come either the more than half of the total voting power or composition will be controlled by the uh, holding company dormant company for, for 55 uh, 455 companies act section defines the dormant company which is not carrying on the business or operation and has not a significant accounting transaction for two years or it has not filed the what <coughs> financial statements for two years or annual return for last two years small company <coughs> paid up share capital to subsection 85 okay paid up share capital of which not exceed than 4 crore or such other higher amount as may be prescribed which shall not be more than 10 crore and turnover what turnover as per the p &L, it should be 40 crore or such other amount or a 10 crore 10 or 40 right domestic company which has a conduct its affairs in its home country so quickly we will write down in our notes of paid up section is 2 subsection 45 
make this start Make this start students. So let us come to our private company and uh, characteristics of private companies are there, privilege and exemptions of private companies are there, public company is there, two things we have to study today mainly. Okay. If you can just cover it up so that next class we can proceed. Hmm. So comes the private company. Private company section is two subsection sixty eight of companies act. Private company means the company having minimum bid of share capital to be prescribed and which by article it is there is a restriction for right to transfer except in case of one person company limits its members to two hundred. Provided this two hundred limit in previous lecture also we have covered this. 200 limit where the two or more persons has more than one of the shares jointly or shall for purpose be treated as a single. Two members are holding one share it will be one share only. Two members jointly are holding one share it will be one share only. Provided further who are employment of the company persons who are formerly been employment were members of the company while in that employment continue to be members after employment is shall not be included in the number of members number of members matlab 200 these 200 prohibits any invitation to the public to subscribe for any securities so there are three cases restriction to transfer its shares then in case of one person except in case of one person company number of members may be 200 but in this number of 200 three important things you have to remember persons who are in employment of the company is not included persons who have been in employment of the company has ceased to be in employment but still they are included they shall not be included in this and also it prohibits the invitation to the public to subscribe its shares for the definition of private limited company specify the restrictions limits and prohibitions which must be explicitly provided by aoa so a company being a private company alters its articles in such a way that they no longer include restriction limits which are required to be included in the articles of the private company such company shall as on the date of the alteration cease to be a private company even if you alter the private com uh, alter the this uh, uh, AOA of the company article of registration also to remove these three restrictions then you will not be called as private company then you are a public company because three restrictions must be there in case of the private company the words private limited must be added at the end of the name private limited company you have must have seen suppose uh, you can say uh, <clears throat> any pr private company so and so technologies private limited so and so technology is private limited this is a private limited company means it has the two words is to be added after its name so as per section 3 sub section 1 a uh, private company may be formed for any lawful purpose by two or more persons by subscribing their names to mo and complying with the requirements of this act in respect of registration private company shall have minimum members of two directors and only two directors may only be two directors of the private company some examples of private companies 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल इट इज लाइफ स्टाइल इंटरनेशनल प्राइवेट लिमिटेड एंड मलाबार गोल्ड प्राइवेट लिमिटेड दीज आर टू ऑफ द एग्जाम्पल्स नाउ वॉट विल बी द करेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द प्राइवेट कंपनी बाई डेफिनेशन ओनली हैव टू कम टू नो हाउ मच वर्ल्ड इज द लिमिट ऑफ द मेम्बर्स टू मेम्बर्स मैक्सिमम टू हंड्रेड एंड रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑफ टू हंड्रेड विल बी थ्री कैटेगरीज विच वी हैव रेड हेयर राइट वन टू एंड थ्री सॉरी वन एंड टू राइट so two members is required maximum 200 member as per provisions the company which is incorporated as a private limited is required compulsory to restrict through its aoa the number of members to 200 taking the joint stakeholders as single member and also does not also not counting the present or former employees who are members of the company rules due to categories will not be including in 200 all right <clears throat> next is limited liability structure The liability of each member of the shareholder is limited. That is, if a company faces loss under a circumstance, then the shareholder are not liable to sell its own assets. Thus, the personal individual assets of the shareholder are not at risk. Then is perpetual succession. Company keep on existing. See, its normal company is keep on existing. Company will go. No matter death comes. No matter any person comes goes. Company will continue. Company keep on existing in law. Even if in case of death, insolvency, bankruptcy of any of the members, this leads to perpetual succession of the company. Life of the company keeps on existing. This is the third point. Fourth point. Index of the members. Then. <clears throat> Quickly, index of the names must be just um, entered in the respective register of the member, and also index shall be in respect of each folio. There should be folio number, right? Contain sufficient indication to enable the entries enable to that folio to register to be reading. So, proper names should be written in their statutory register of a private company along with the folio number. Folio number is like a tenants, a te ro roll number, like roll numbers one, two, three, four, right? So the maintenance of index of the members is not necessary in case of the members of the company is less than fifty, which is a privilege of private wherein the number of members is less than fifty. A number of directors. How many directors should be formed? Private company minimum two. Two directors of private company exist and consist operations. There is no minimum paid up share capital in case of private company. And is seven prospectus. Prospectus is a detailed statement of the company which is issued by company for it. However, in case of private directors. prohibit an invitation to uh, public to subscribe for any there are no such need to issue the prospectus because in this type of the company public is not invited so no need of prospectus 7.8 point commencement of business the company incorporated after the commencement of the business with effect from this having the share capital cannot the commence business or borrow unless declaration is filed there should be declaration which should, should be given by the register and it has company has filed with the register a verification also is required to be registered at the time of the commencement of the business when you will commence business declaration is to be given second is the company has filed with the register a verification of the registered office name it is mandatory for a public company to use the private limited after its name so total of uh, nine points we have covered what was the nine points first point will be uh, quickly limit of the members two and maximum 200 two people are not including those are in employment of the company and those are ceased to be in employment of the company yeah second limited liability structure perpetual succession index of the members number of directors how many two paid up share capital no need prospectus not to issue why because you cannot give shares to the public commencement of business how you will commence by giving two things declaration by the director and the company is filed register a verification now some of the privileges are there to private company <clears throat> two marks question can come for this what are the privileges that a private company enjoys as compared to what public company the company is at confer certain privileges on private company which are not subsidiaries of the public company such companies are exempted from complying with certain provisions so we will directly come to the uh, privileges and exemptions easy to form private company is relatively easier to form two persons are only written so it is very easy to form as opposed to seven or more persons in public there is no requirement of minimum paid up share capital of the private company second is provisions for alteration of aoa AOA of the private limited company may contain provisions for entrenchment of the effect that specified provisions 
may be altered only if conditions or procedure as are more restrictive than those applicable in case of special resolution. So it has the provision to alter the AOA. Then third is uh, lesser compliance for issue of shares. Private company while issuing further capital is not required to make a prospector or submit a statement in ROC. So at that it's not it has does not have to issue the prospectus also because it's not inviting the shares to the public. This is also beverages okay then uh, closure of register of the members debenture holder and security holder suppose any director uh, sorry any holder any shareholders you have to close this register it is very easy process in case of the private company right company closing the register of members or debenture shall give at least seven days previous notice and in such members may be specified by SEBI if such company is a listed company by advertisement or by it has to circular it has to issue the uh, advertisement also right hmm. this requirement is not applicable in case of private company because it is applicable to the public company suppose if a public company has to close the members register because it is a prospectus many many shareholders are involved so in that case they have to issue <coughs> they have to go uh, publish the advertisement in english hindi and regional newspaper but this is not a requirement of a private company Provided the notice has been served to all the members of the private company not less than 7 days prior to the closure of the register of members. Only 7 days notice needs to be given. Lesser compliance is related to the directors of private company. Private company has a privilege of having not less than 2 members as opposed to 3 members in case of the public company. At every general meeting company or public company, one third of the members for, for the time being are liable for to retire by rotation. However, directors of private company are not liable to be retired by rotation. Appointment of woman director, 149 section, every listed company, every public company, com public company and every listed company, public company, which public companies are covered, having the paid of share capital of 100 crore or turnover of 300 crore, they have mandated to have a one woman director, private companies are exempt from appointing woman director, appointment of independent director, 149 section, it deals with Every listed, same as woman director, it deals with every listed company shall have at least one third of the total number of directors as independent director. And CG may prescribe public company having paid up share capital of 10 crore or turnover at 100 crore. And in aggregate outstanding loan or debentures of 50 crore to have at least two directors as independent director in the BOD of the company. However, private companies are exempted. See 149 section, if it is a listed company, then you have to point at least two directors as independent director but uh, other companies like when you are having a paid up share capital of 10 crore or more when you are having a turnover of 100 crore or more where when in your company the uh, your deposits have increased to 50 crore this limit it will come in your uh, next chapters also so you just go through give a glance here in this chapter detail may we will study in the next lecture Right, so appointment of directors, there are two directors will be needed if your company is covered under these limits. It is not there in your private company. Disqualification for appointment of director. Private company may by AOA provide for any disqualification and dis so disqualification may be there. Vocation of an office, private company may by its AOA provide any ground for a vocation of office of a director. Any company in any private company can in, in its AOA provide for how to vacate the office by director next is kmp appointment of managing director ceo manager this 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 as per 203 is not applicable however all private company having paid up shared capital of 10 crore or more is required upon whole time company secretary a private company having paid up share capital of 10 crore or more have to appoint the what whole time cs overall Maximum managerial remuneration, total managerial remuneration payable to public company in respect of the financial shall not exceed 11% of the net profits. However, such restriction is not applicable to private company and is allowed to pay the justified rem uh, remuneration as the AOA. Then is report on annual general meeting. So, private companies are not required to report on AOG through E form MGT 15 unlike listed company. Then is audit committee and nomination remuneration committee section. 177.88 provides that every listed company, public company having paid up share capital of 10 or more turnover of 100 or more and aggregate outstanding loans, debenture and deposits of 550 crore or more to audit or audit committee and NRC. However, private company are exempted. So, these limits I will tell you, uh, you can we can cover it in the next lecture. 
when there is hold together a proper chapter will come limits you can learn in that but give it a glance here visual mechanism is not applicable is applicable to private company only if it has ordered borrowed money from banks and pf uh, institutions in excess of 50 crore internal audit section 138 provides that only private companies having turnover of 200 or more during the proceeding outstanding loans from banks exceeding 100 or at any point during proceeding to a point a internal auditor right only private company having these this limits they will appoint an internal auditor and csr committee section 135 provides that a private company uh, having only two directors is required to appoint a csr committee with the two such directors only so what are main main exemptions first of all quickly we will uh, revise easy to form provision for alteration of aoa lesser compliance for issue of shares right then closure of registers or debenture holders or the security holders at least seven days notice is sufficient lesser compliance rating to what related to directors of the private company then appointment of women director section 149 it is not applicable independent director it is not applicable disqualification of the appointment of uh, director it they can add this clause in their aoa vocation of the office clause can also be added in the aoa kmp position uh, KMP appointment section 203 it is not applicable to private company overall maximum and individual remuneration which is shall not exceed 11 percent of the profit such restriction is not applicable to private company report on a annual general meeting is not required audit committee and nrc committee is exempted visual mechanism only if you are borrowing that exceeded 50 crore then only you form visual mechanism then internal auditor there are certain limits if your company is covered under these limits then it is exempted and next uh, i mean then you can appoint an auditor and then a csr committee fine so these all things deeply you will read in the upcoming chapter just give it a glance and just mark this it's very important Just mark these provisions of the private company, then we can move ahead.
Here you can write two two fraction sixty eight. Two two fraction seventy one double something like that. Move ahead with public company. So public company means a company which is not a private company. Having a paid up capital as may be prescribed, subsidiary of a public company shall be deemed to be public company. Okay. Public company may be said to be an association of consisting of no more than seven members, which may be listed in Act. In principle, any member of the public who is willing to pay a price may acquire shares in the debentures. A security of the public company may be coded on the stock exchange. The number of members is not limited to two hundred. Right. Means you can have n number of members and easy transferability of shares. The provision contained in law. Some example of public companies are Bell, Coal India, Steel, ONGC, Bharat Petroleum. So what are the main characteristics of private uh, public company? BOD. BOD minimum of three directors and maximum can be fifteen. More than fifteen you can have, but after passing the special resolution, and special resolution will come in the general meeting. Okay. Then there is limited liability. Shareholders of the company for the losses of the company is limited to the share contributed only. This is what makes it a separate entity from its members. Okay. So this is limited liability. Number of members they have num minimum number of members of seven shareholders and maximum no limit. Transferability of shares. Shares they can be bought, they can be sold by the directors. However, in case of listed company, the shares are traded on the stock exchange where the shares of the company are listed. There is a transferable between the members and the people trading in the stock exchange. Life span it is not affected by the death of one of the shareholder, but the shares are transferable to next kin or the legal heirs. Means next successor can get the share shares, and the company continues to run its business. In case of the directors, that the board is empowered to fill the resulting casual vacancy that may be filled by the BOD at the board meeting, which may be consequently approved by the members in the immediate general meeting. Then there is financial privacy. They are strictly regulated and are uh, required by the law to publish their complete financial annually. So proper finances needs to be published. Capital. The uh, the public limited company enjoy an increased ability to raise capital since they can issue shares to the public through the stock market. So they can raise the what capital. So they can raise the additional capital that means by issuing the debentures and bonds, right? So capital, financial privacy. Life span, transferability, number of members, limited liability, board of directors. Number of members are what? Minimum number of members will be seven. Next, what is the main distinction now between the pu public company and the private company? Will tell. Huh? What you have read? Main distinction between private and the public company will be. Make a note. This is very important question. First is minimum number of members. So in case of private company, minimum number will be two and seven. In case of the public company, then is maximum number of members. What are the maximum number of members in private company? It should not cross two hundred, and whereas there is no such thing maximum number, but seven will be the minimum. Transferability of shares. So shares of any person in a company shall be movable and transferable in manner by A O of the company. In a private company, by its definition, A O A. Have to contain a section on transferability of shares. So restricted in private and not in public company. Prospectus. Private company cannot issue prospectus. While public company may issue prospectus. General public can subscribe to its shares by issuing prospectus. In case of public company, then is minimum. 
number of directors so private company must have two directors on its board and public company must have three directors in its board then is the retirement so directors of private company are not required to retire by rotation but in case of the public company at least two third of the cup they should retire by rotation see in private company it's a, it's a norm it's it's a provision properly that the two third of the directors will be retired by rotation next is quorum quorum is what attendance quorum is attendance in legal language it's called quorum okay quorum of general meeting so <clears throat> Quorum of general meeting shall be five, fifteen, thirty. See, five members should be personally present if the number of members as on date of the meeting is not more than thousand. See, if the number of shareholders at the time of uh, at the time of the general meeting it is thousand, not more than thousand, then five members should be the quorum. They should be present in attendance. Okay, fifteen members personally present. Personally, they should be present. See, highlight this word. If the number of members as on date of the meeting is more than one thousand, but up to what five thousand. So if your number of members is still five thousand, then fifteen members should be personally present. Then thirty members should be personally present if the number of members they exceed five thousand. And in case of private company, so by higher number, two members personally present shall be the quorum. It should shall be the quorum. Fine. So quorum. uh is the last point <clears throat> minimum number of members should be 2 in case of private company public may it is 7 maximum number of members 200 no limit transferability of shares restriction only in case of private company prospectus restriction only in case of private company minimum number of directors what 2 Uh, minimum number of directors in case of 2 and 3 in case of the public company retirement two third retire by rotation case of public no restriction in required in what uh, private company quorum of general meeting in case of public company will be 5 15 30 five personally present if at the date of general meeting not more than 1000 members are there then if more than 1000 but less than 5000 then 15 members should be personally present if more than 5000 then 30 members should be personally 5 15 Thirty thousand, five thousand, more than five thousand. You are like that, okay? So this is. Uh, we will complete this uh, till this uh, when we will wind up. Advantages of the public company quickly raising capital through public issue, prestigious profile and confidence, growth and expansion opportunity, widening the shareholder base and spreading risk, transferability of shares. These are all the advantages. Disadvantages will be what? See, lack of confidentiality would be there because your statements is getting publicized. Ownership and control issues would be there because shareholders are more involved. Higher level of transfer transparency are required in this. More vulnerable to takeovers. More companies can take your company. Takeovers are happens in public company. Increase government scrutiny because public is involved. This is about the public company, right? So uh, we'll quickly wind up our uh, second lecture, second chapter. So chapter two was started, whereby we have mentioned the uh, Justice Lindley definition of companies is given. A O A contribute money share uh, share through contribution of money, employment of money, employ money in business, share the profit and loss. This is all the characteristics of the. what company so characteristics of the company we have we have studied corporate personality type artificial personalities perpetual succession separate property share transferability of shares can be possible and capacity to sue and sue thereby we have mentioned two case laws one was western maharashtra versus bajaj auto and second was employee situation versus cbs and sun then is disadvantage of the registered company what was disadvantage of the registered company formality and expenses are more privacy loss is less there is more privacy loss diversified control public accountability and fraud possibilities can happen then type of registered company we have studied 
statutory company, registered company, non-registered company. The registered company may do subsection 60A, private company, two or more members can form, public company, seven or more members can form. Then, in this also, company limited by shares, company limited by guarantee and unlimited company comes. Company limited by shares are those which are covered in 2 subsection 22, limited by uh, guarantee 2 subsection 21 and unlimited 2 subsection 92. Types of the company in case of the classification, two things we have studied on basis of the incorporation in first list of liability. Liability we again limited by shares, limited by guarantee and limited company. Limited by shares to subsection 22 to subsection 21 is for limited by guarantee. Unlimited company. Unlimited company to subsection 92. Please refer here. Registered company and statutory companies were there. Which were other than companies are 2013, it is what statutory. Registered, which are registered under companies are 2013. Other forms of the companies where we have studied, Section 8 company, that is non-profit company, if you are promoting your science, art, commerce, or regional, regional uh, thing, it is Section 8 company. Government company to Section 44, where more than 50% 50 50 of the previous chapter is under government, it is not as a government company. Holding company to the section 46, which is uh, and holding company which have group companies. Subsidiary companies were to the section 87, whereby composition of the BODs is controlled by the holding company and the more than half of your uh, controlling voting power it is given to the holding company. Dormant company 455 of the companies that whereby what you are not carrying on the business and all you have filed the financial statement for preceding what two years. Then it has state company to subsection 6 and small company to subsection 85 where, whereby we have learned about some of the what provisions. Now distinction between a private and a public company. Maximum number of members, minimum number of members and mini minimum number of members when we will see So it will be 2 and public may it will be 7, maximum may it was 200 in case of private company and public company may there were no what this thing. And transferability of shares was there, transferability of shares restriction will be only in case of the private company, not in case of the public company. Prospectus may, when the public is involved then we will issue a prospectus and public is involved in case of the public company, not involved in case of the private company. So prospectus will not be issued in case of the private company. Then is minimum number of the directors. How many were minimum number of directors were there? Directors were there in case of uh, uh, public company, 3 and 2 in case of private. Retirement of rotation, two third of the directors will retire by rotation in case of public company. It is not applicable to public private company. Then quorum of the general meeting. So five members needs to be personally present as on date of the meeting. It should not uh, see 5, 15, and 30. Make this table. Quorum table. Personally present, okay.
right in case of the public company please make this quorum so quickly it is uh, what is the difference between private and the public company minimum number of members maximum number of members transfer of shares prospectus minimum number of directors then retirement quorum in case uh, quorum of public company in case of what <clears throat> in case of members personally present personally personally public company in general meeting You can just uh, draw these tables as well. So this is how we have completed our uh, very second lecture, second chapter I mean, second chapter, second lecture of second chapter. So just study what we have, uh, give it a glance, study what we have covered. These all chapters, these all portions we have studied still characteristics and distinction. Okay, now we will start with other things. Fine. So, students, we will conclude this chapter, conclude this sessions of this second chapter. Please try to make handwritten notes, revise through handwritten notes, study through handwritten notes, and complete everything. Okay. This is how you can crack your examinations, yeah. So, see you in next lecture, students.